Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amanda She. I'm an anesthesiologist and intensivist. And today I'm gonna to talk about how I studied for the ABA critical care medicine examination. So the critical care medicine examination is a subspecialty board certification that you can take after you have completed your fellowship in an anesthesia critical care medicine program. So I completed my fellowship. Unfortunately, my fellowship coincided with COVID. So my examination was actually delayed because of note, you have to have passed your applied exam in order to take the subspecialty examinations like critical care boards. That means that if you end up with an applied spot that is later in the year and you do not have your pass in hand before you register for, or before registration deadline is for the critical care medicine exam, you cannot take your critical care boards until after until the following year. So just be aware of this because this was actually an issue for me. Initially, I had taken my advance right after my completion of residency. So that was in 2019. I got my score back that I had passed the advance. And then because I was rounding, I was actually in the ICU that month, I was not able to get onto the portal to be able to register for uh, the applied exam or the oral boards. And as a result, my oral board exam dates, uh, availability for those dates were only in the fall or September. September is too late to be able to get a pass in hand and be able to register for the critical care subspecialty exam. So I actually reached out to the ABA because I was like, I can't even take my critical care boards with the way that this is scheduled. Is there some way that I can move my exam up? I was actually able to move my exam up to June with a $500 change fee. However, then the pandemic closed everything down and the applied exam or the oral boards became a Zoom examination and got delayed further out. So my whole process hopefully is not going to be like your process. Hopefully your process will be a lot more smooth than what I went through, but I will say that was a long process for me. So number one piece of advice when you're watching this video is that please, please, please make sure that you have passed your oral boards with enough time in order to register for this subspecialty exam. Now this exam happens only annually and in October, the beginning of October. The late registration deadline is September 8th, so that means that you have to have your oral board pass in hand by the beginning of September. And it takes at least six weeks for them to be able to give you your exam result. So definitely think about that process. And if you have a later oral boards or applied exam date, ask about potentially moving it up. Now that being said, if you feel like you need that extra time to be able to study for the oral boards, then do what is best for you. But I just think that it's so frustrating to have to delay your critical care exam um, by an entire year just because of timing of oral boards. Now, in the description below, I have provided the three resources that the ABA has provided to us in order to help guide your studying. Those three resources are the content outline, so that's just like all of the materials that they can ask you about on the exam, the blueprint, which gives you the nuts and bolts of the uh, type of questions and the number of questions and then sample questions as a PDF. About the actual structure of the exam, it is just like the basic, it is just like the advanced, it is very similar in nature, 200 questions, four hours. We have done this before, guys. So this exam should not come as a surprise to you in its format in that it is, again, 200 questions, four hours. The difference, though, was, and I hadn't appreciated this until I had actually taken the exam, uh, was that the critical care board questions only have three, it's a multiple choice question with three options, not four. So your basic and your advanced were both four options and the critical care boards were only three. So I was like, oh, I just have a higher likelihood of getting or guessing the right answer in this instance. But it actually came as a surprise because all of the study materials I used had at least four question or four response options. And so I was like, oh, this actually works in our favor because there's less things you have to figure out what to cross out. So just a little tip there. I was surprised. I was like, oh, look at these sample questions. They actually do only have three options for the multiple choice. So that's something to consider as well. Just a little background. 
critical care medicine board examinations uh, have been available since 1986. So it's been a couple decades and yeah, registration is expensive just like your other board exams. Uh, your regular standard registration is $1,800 and everything beyond that can go up to $2,300. So for late registration, it's $2,300. Now for the part that you guys have tuned in for, which is how did I actually study for the critical care medicine board exam? First of all, I'll say that it was very challenging to figure out what kind of resources were gonna be good for me to be able to study. I felt like my fellowship was relatively well-rounded in that I got a lot of surgical ICU time and I also had quite a bit of time in the medical ICU. So I felt like the medical stuff that a lot of people may not get as much of, I actually had a pretty good idea of some of it, or at least some exposure from my patients that I was caring for on the MICU side. So I felt like it was relatively well-rounded. I did not get a lot of neuro ICU experience, and that was on my own accord. I decided I didn't want to do a ton of neuro ICU if I could avoid it, and I didn't have a ton of mechanical support devices and cardiothoracic ICU work, but I definitely encountered a lot of ACS and other kinds of myocardial events in terms of managing those without using mechanical support. So that was kind of the background of my fellowship year. And so going into this exam, I was just trying to figure out like where were my holes going to be when I was going to take this exam and, and encounter, you know, what, what kinds of questions could they ask me that I maybe have no exposure to or limited exposure to. So when I had researched on the internet how to study for this exam, I came up with a couple different resources. So first of all, uh, the SCCM, or the Society for Critical Care Medicine, has a self-assessment, uh, it's called Self-Assessment Adult Multiprofessional Critical Care Book. It is 200-ish questions, and it is about 200 to $300, depending on what kind of uh, member or not member you are. So that is one resource that I found that was well-regarded and said that it was useful for this exam. Another thing I encountered was the Chest Seek, uh, critical care medicine collection. Just be very aware, CHEST is an organization that also serves our medical ICU colleagues and as a result they also have resources for pulmonology boards and their sleep medicine boards. So there is a specific collection that is just aimed towards critical care medicine and that is the one that you want to get for this particular exam. Finally, the other thing that I encountered or ended up having just by chance is I contributed to the Critical Care Medicine Review A Thousand Questions and Answers. So one of my colleagues had put together this great review book of a thousand questions and I actually contributed a couple questions to it so I ended up getting a free copy of it. In that free copy I realized, hey, this is actually a database of a lot of questions that I can use and so I actually use that resource as well. So those were the three things that I focused on. So as you can tell, I focused on very much question-based studying. I did not really do a review book by any means. Uh, that is something that some people find very useful. And what I would say is that in order to create the same kind of, or the best kind of review book in order to prepare for this exam, you want to use the content outline to be able to figure out where your holes are and, and things like that. But I decided to focus on a question-only type of of preparation for this exam and those are the three resources I use. In the description below I have links, direct links, in order to be able to order these resources um, and be able to see what I'm talking about. As a disclaimer, if you buy the thousand question and answer book from Amazon, I may get a little few pennies from it, so thank you in advance if you do do that. There is an affiliate link there. Uh, that aside, uh, so I used this th these three resources and I actually started studying about, well, I created a study plan like six months in advance, but in reality, I really focused on studying about two months in advance for the exam. Uh, and just to give you some context, I was already a uh, staff member in my hospital. I had full, I had full clinical duties. It actually felt a little better to be able to try to study as an attending rather than as a trainee. So it was a different kind of feeling though, trying to coerce myself into studying when I was already done with training and formal training. So just be aware of that, like the 
landscape and the way that you are studying may change just because you're in a different part of your life when you're not in a formal training program and trying to study for boards. Two months prior to the exam, I really hungered down and started trying to keep track of all the questions I had done in each of the resources. Now, to give you a little idea of how I thought of the resources, the SCCM book, I had an older edition of it that I was using. It felt like some of the questions were a little outdated, but I still used them because they helped bring up topics that I knew I was weak in. So that's one resource I went completely through. The uh, Critical Care Medicine Review, the thousand questions and answers, I probably made it about a third to halfway through all of that. So it's it, I wasn't consistent about my use of that resource and I kind of wish I was because there were so many really good questions in that book um, that I thought were really helpful. And then finally the chest seek uh, question bank, I actually got through about half of that. So those questions I'll say were really hard. Like they were like exceptionally hard. And I think that that's what the value that that brings in is that's the medicine side of things that some of us may be a little weaker in because we did oftentimes a surgical critical care fellowship. And so a lot of those really esoteric medical diagnoses that you would see in a MICU, we don't see as much of. And so as a result, I actually thought that the chest seek database or question bank was really useful in reminding me of some of these things that I hadn't seen or thought about since my medical school step one exam. So that's something I'd say if you need to be able to just focus your attention on things, I would say the chest seek database or the chest seek question bank was really helpful for, like I said, medical things. The thousand question and answer review book uh, is a little more recent. And so that one just offers you a lot of opportunities to keep asking yourself questions and using it as a review resource. And then finally, SCCM, there's an updated version and I can't speak to the updated edition about how relevant it is to the critical care board exam, but I did feel like that was an easier book to try to get through um, and finish. So it is something that I would still recommend to you guys. I will show you guys, uh, my spreadsheet was very, very bare bones for this preparation. All I did was keep track of all the questions that I had gone through through so that I could give myself an idea of how many questions I had reviewed. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I did is different from my prior study plans, I created a Google document where I had the content outline and I tried to get the questions I got wrong and kind of map it to the content outline in some way. I didn't really, it wasn't consistent about creating this content, like filling out the content outline. What I ended up doing instead was that if I got a question wrong at least twice, like on a specific topic, uh, then I would go ahead and put that question response. So the, what was the concept that I had missed about that question? I really delved deep into the literature there and tried to understand the, what I had not had or what knowledge I didn't possess in order to answer that correctly. And then I used that review sheet as a way to, as I was approaching like the days leading up to the exam, I reviewed those topics because I knew those were my weaknesses. So that's one last thing that I would recommend is that as you start studying, the questions you get wrong, maybe create some sort of document so that you can keep track of all of those things that you may need to spend a little extra time on or need to review to make sure that you're sharp for the exam. The exam itself, I'll say that uh, had some interesting questions and that is all I will say. Uh, I'm interested to hear your guys's response after this October when you take it about how you felt the exam was, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, to give you guys a little maybe reassurance, back in the day at least, the pass rate for the critical care medicine board exam was at least in the high 80, 80% 80 range. And so you have a pretty good chance of passing this. Uh, and most of us have done a year of training that has really prepared us to be able to take care of critically ill patients. And a lot of us have had a lot of really in-depth experience with management of ARDS as a result of this pandemic. So that all being said, this video should be a lot shorter than my other ones because it was relatively straightforward in terms of the preparation that I did for the exam even though it felt harder because I didn't think that there was a more defined path 
for studying for this exam. But at the end of the day, I ended up passing and I anticipate that most of you guys will as well. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you liked it with a thumbs up. If you wanna hear more from me in the future, please subscribe to my channel. But until next time, I'll see you guys.